Hi guys, welcome to our story time today. Our story today is about one of my favourite types of animals. This is called the lonely giraffe. Now, I do love giraffes, but it's a bit sad that he's lonely. I wonder why? This is by Peter Blight and is illustrated by Michael Terry. Remember, the illustrator is the person who does the pictures. But anyway, this is The Lonely Giraffe, and I hope you enjoy it. The Lonely Giraffe. The jungle animals were really quite a friendly bunch. Every day, the cockatoos were first to shake their feathers and wake up the other animals. The elephants would trumpet, good morning, and the snakes would hiss, hello. Even the grumpy lion managed a friendly growl. All the animals met near the river for breakfast every morning to discuss the jungle news. Everyone took their turn to speak, but no one listened to the giraffe. The giraffe was just too tall. By the time he had spread his spindly legs and lowered his head to the ground, the other animals had lost interest. So the giraffe would lift his long neck and wander off. He spent all day with his head in the trees, eating the sweetest leaves. He didn't realise that the birds and the monkeys that lived in the trees were frightened of his large head suddenly appearing among the treetops or that the small animals on the ground ran away because they were scared of being trodden on. In the end, the lonely giraffe didn't bother trying to speak to anyone. He moved from tree to tree, munching on the leaves, and the jungle creatures went on avoiding him. That was how it went for the whole of the long, dry summer. When the rainy season came, the large animals headed for the high ground. The small animals sheltered in the bushes near the river and the monkeys took cover in the trees. The rain poured down for days. The jungle animals became frightened that the river would burst its banks. Don't worry, said the alligator. I'll carry you to safety in my big, wide jaws. <gasps> but the animals didn't trust him. As the river rose, the jungle creatures became even more frightened. They huddled together beneath the bushes and no one heard the distant roar until the leopard pricked up his ears, but nobody could think what it was. The giraffe looked over the heads of the other animals on the ground his big eyes widened like saucers, and he slowly bent his spotted neck until the worried creatures could hear him. The river is flooding, said the giraffe in a surprisingly squeaky voice. A wall of water is racing down the valley. <gasps> what can we do? asked the gazelle. It's too late to run away. We'll all be drowned squeaked the mouse. Oh, the alligator will eat us, hissed the snake. Climb up here, called the monkey from the treetops. The river won't reach the high branches. Hurry, squawked the cockatoo. I can see the water coming. The jungle animals raced to the trees, but some of them could not climb up the slippery tree trunks. Their hooves and tails were not made for climbing. The roaring water rushed closer and the animals shivered with fright. Then the giraffe had an idea. He bent his knees and spoke to the animals. Climb onto my back, he squeaked in his high voice. The water is almost here. The river was lapping around the creatures. The monkey jumped up the giraffe's neck and called to the others. The hairy warthog was next to carefully climb on. One by one, 
the animals helped each other to safety. Then the giraffe straightened his knees as the water flooded the jungle. He stretched up his long neck and the last few animals hurried into the branches, helped by the chattering monkeys. The water rushed around the giraffe's strong legs and sprayed the animals in the trees. Then the river rushed on. The water slowly sank back to the ground and the sun came out from behind the clouds. The giraffe poked his head high up into the branches and the animal slid down his back to the damp earth. From that day on, the giraffe was never lonely again. The jungle animals would wait for the giraffe to lower his head and join in the conversation. The birds and monkeys in the trees were no longer afraid of the giraffe's big head. The cockatoos would find the sweetest leaves for the brave giraffe. The elephants would trumpet, good morning, and the snakes would hiss hello. And the grumpy lion would pretend to growl before falling asleep in the sunshine. The end. Well, that was a lovely story, I thought. It's a shame how the giraffe was lonely in the beginning, but he still helped all of the other animals and they were so friendly to him at the end by way of saying thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this anyway. This book is called The Lonely Giraffe.